greetings to all our subscribers. All those who are interested in the evolution of our Earth, historical facts about dinosaurs and other creatures that lived millions of years ago. Today our episode is dedicated to a period of time that has passed relatively recently compared to the times when dinosaurs lived. We will begin the story from the moment when man appeared. So, let's go! We live with you in the modern world. Humanity stands at the highest stage of evolution. But this only seems to us. Changes are happening to us people too. But very slowly. Just some 500 years ago, a person would have considered speeding supersonic planes and fast cars a miracle. And would have considered space flights to be devilish tricks and blasphemy. There is nothing to say about computers, phones and the internet. The Knights of the Middle Ages would have mass hysteria. And this is only some 500 years ago. What can we say about a thousand years ago? About millions of years ago. Changes are happening to us. Very slower than we realize, but very fast compared to the changes that took place millions of years ago. And the structure of our body and organism also undergoes changes. In a couple of thousand years, we may look something like this. Or maybe even this. Or maybe so. Now we're going back in time. About four million years ago, when the monkey was still a very common monkey. But this was already the most ancient human ancestor. Man did not descend from apes. He essentially remained a monkey. Only modern. Reasonable. And at times civilized. But what happened anyway? Many millions of years ago. Then began the exact moment when changes slowly began to occur in her body. They happened very slowly. Thousands years. The first modifications appeared when the monkey was no longer a monkey, but it was still far from being human. There is a theory that a group of monkeys that lived on the future African continent five million years ago split up and dispersed over a vast territory. From one group, humans emerged and the other transformed into the closest species to humans that we know today. It's a chimpanzee. One group evolved into hominids and you and I appeared. And the other stopped in evolution. But the chimpanzee is by far the most intelligent animal and very closely similar in development to humans. And it is likely that after many years, the chimpanzee will become the creatures that will look like the characters from the cult films about the planet of the apes. The group of hominid monkeys that turned into humans was facilitated by earthly disasters, forest fires, floods, and as a result, temperature changes. Nature forced the monkeys to come down from the trees. But on the ground, they had to learn completely new methods of survival. A change in diet and a different defense against enemies turned primates into intelligent monkeys. Then it was the predators who greatly contributed to the development of the future man. And it was they who forced the monkey to pick up a stone from the ground and use it as a weapon. We all evolve, like other creatures on the planet, continuously and every day. We just have to understand that such a process is very leisurely and very slow, 
lasting thousands and thousands of years. All living beings on our planet had common ancestors. But evolution never tries to create something intelligent. In all cases, it depends on the creatures themselves. Circumstances of life that can go one way or another. And therefore, several million years passed before man became man. But let's go back to the Miocene era 10 million years ago. It was then that the Miocene Dryopithecus already existed. They were half terrestrial, half arboreal apes. Dryopithecus lived in the tropical rainforests of Africa, but their traces of activity in bones were also found in the forest steppes. But there are also known facts of their residence in Eastern Europe and in the territory of the modern Caucasus. For 0.2 to 1 million years ago, evolution created a new species from Dryopithecus Australopithecus, which is considered the closest to the ancestral form of humans. Australopithecus also lived in Africa. His body was covered with thick hair, and in appearance he was closer to a monkey than to a man. However, he already walked on two legs and used various objects as tools, which was facilitated by the spaced big toe. The volume of his brain was smaller than that of a human, but larger than that of modern apes. This species was divided into three groups early Australopithecines, who lived from four to seven million years ago. Grassel Australopithecines two to four million years ago, and the massive Australopithecus from one to two and a half million years ago. Judge for yourself how slowly the evolution of the transformation from monkey to man occurs. It was in Australopithecus that signs of upright walking began to appear and the structure of the skull changed. Australopithecus played a significant role in human evolution. The species Homo sapiens, or Homo sapiens, traces its roots to Australopithecines, splitting from a common root with Australopithecines approximately 3 million years ago, and this group was called the Evolutionary Group. For 3 million years these creatures were nothing more than apes, walking human-like on two legs, albeit hunched over. Perhaps in the end, they knew how to use available stones to crack, for example, nuts. The life expectancy of Australopithecus, which was constantly under threat not only from predators, but also from some large herbivores, was insignificant and averaged 20 years. Almost none of them lived to be 40 years old, and one in seven lived to be 30. The next link in evolution was made up of a new group Pithecanthropus, translated from Greek, monkey man. Pithecanthropus appeared about one and a half million years ago. The short stature of the future man was a little more than one and a half meters. In terms of brain volume, Pithecanthropus occupied an intermediate position between Homo habilis on the one hand and Neanderthal man and Homo sapiens on the other. A skilled person had a brain volume that was half that of most modern adults. What did Pithecanthropus do? Well, of course, their main occupation was searching for food. And in addition to collecting edible herbs and berries, they were already hunting various animals with might and main because the vegetation was not enough for the body, which already required proteins and fats. 
parts of the skeletons of rhinoceroses, elephants, hippopotamuses, and giraffes were discovered near the bones of Pithecanthropus. There were stone tools nearby. Paleontologists also found the first tools used by Pithecanthropus. The danger from wild animals and climatic conditions forced them to do this. Living in large groups made it easier to hunt large animals that were distinguished by their remarkable strength and speed of movement. In addition to hunting, Pithecanthropus could engage in fishing, most often catching fish with their bare hands. In the next stage of evolution, Neanderthals appeared approximately 500,000 years ago. To date, it has been proven that Neanderthals are not the direct ancestors of modern humans. Their common ancestor has not yet been precisely established. It is attributed either to the human predecessor or to the Heidelberg people of Africa. Neanderthals were shorter and broader in the shoulders than modern humans, but they also had a larger brain and may have been able to speak. They also already made tools, wooden spears with stone tips, scrapers, axes. They actively used fire. They ate mainly meat, although they also ate plants. In addition, Neanderthals used medicinal plants. There is also evidence beyond treating diseases. These are the burial places of deceased family members. Traces of rituals in the first worship of deities. Initially, a few Neanderthals could have mixed with representatives of more numerous populations. With Denisovans, possibly with Cro-Magnons, as the authors interpret the results of genetic studies. But some geneticists suggest that the presence of Neanderthal and Denisovan genes in modern people could have appeared not as a result of their hybridization, but from polymorphism of the genes of their common ancestor, with whom the evolutionary branches of modern people, Neanderthals and Denisovans diverged earlier 700 to 765,000 years ago. Well, the final stage of development was the Cro-Magnons, who appeared much later than the Neanderthals. The Cro-Magnon man is the ancestor of all modern humans, appearing in East Africa approximately 130 to 180,000 years ago. They were actually no different from modern humans. The Cro-Magnons inherited from their ancestors a large active brain and quite practical technology, thanks to which they took an unprecedented step forward in a relatively short period of time. This manifested itself in aesthetics, the development of communication and symbol systems, tool-making technology and active adaptation to external conditions, as well as in new forms of social organization and a more complex approach to one's own kind. The Cro-Magnons lived in communities of 20 to 100 people and created settlements for the first time in history. The Cro-Magnons, like the Neanderthals, lived in caves and tents made of skins. In Eastern Europe they built dugouts, and in Siberia they built huts made of stone slabs. They had articulate speech, built houses, and dressed in clothes made from skins. They lived in a tribal society and tamed a dog, succeeded in hunting wild animals. It was the Cro-Magnons from Africa who began to gradually move west. Both the remains of these human ancestors and their cave paintings were discovered in France. They were 6,000 years old. We briefly told you about human evolution. If you liked our episode, like and comment your opinion. And also subscribe and be sure to click on the 